Everybody knows that the built-in audio quality of your PC simply cannot compete with something like an audio interface, a DAC or dedicated headphone amp. But is that really true? And if so, how big of a difference is it really? Hey, Julian Kraus here, and I often get the question if somebody should upgrade from their built-in audio in their PC and what kind of audio quality increase they can expect. I was curious myself, and to find out I measured the audio quality of three different PCs built in the last years, 2022, 2018 and 2011, to see if the built-in audio quality has improved over the last 10 years and how it compares to a dedicated audio solution like an audio interface. Here are the contenders and you can see the full specs of the machines, but for audio quality we actually only really need to focus on the motherboards, as this is where the audio chip is built into. My 2011 PC uses an ASRock P67 Pro 3 motherboard, the 2018 PC was built with an ASRock Z370 Tai Chi, and my 2022 PC is based on the MSI Pro Z690A. On the other side we have, well, all kinds of audio interfaces that I've measured over the last years, and in this video we will have a look at how the built-in audio stacks up to them. By the way, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, then subscribe. I also plan to make videos on DAX and headphone amps in the future, so please let me know in the comments what you would like to see tested next. Now, for this test, there are essentially two big categories. First, let's see how the built-in audio performs as a line level output. That would be the case when you use the 3.5mm output on the motherboard to connect to an active pair of speakers. And after that, we will also check out how the built-in audio performs with headphones connected. Because, well, that's also a very common use case. As with all my tests, let's start out with the frequency response and this should be as flat as possible in the audible range, as this means that all audible frequencies are played back with the same amplitude. What looks like only one response is actually three, which lay pretty much perfectly on top of each other. So there is hardly any difference in the performance between the three PCs and this is essentially a perfect performance with a ruler flat response in the audible range. And the performance is even closer on the rear connection. I swear, there are three separate measurements in this graph. This goes to show that the frequency response can be excellent even on very cheap audio devices. All PCs were measured at a sample rate of 48 kHz, and because of that the response falls off steeply above the human hearing range. For a comparison, here are a few more responses from different audio interfaces, and in many cases they offer an even higher sample rate, which extends the frequency response in the ultrasonic range. But it's highly questionable whether this brings any audible benefit. At least in the audible range, all measured performances are excellent, with a nice and flat response. In that regard, the built-in audio performs equally well to external audio devices. Ok, let's check out the maximum output level. For these unbalanced outputs, I would expect them to be somewhere close to the Redbook standard of 2V or 6dBV. As you can see, only the Z370 Tai Chi delivers 6dBV on the rear output and actually 9dBV on the front. The P67 Pro 3 and the Pro Z690A fall a bit short with only 1 to 2 dBV of maximum output. This can have an impact on the noise performance, so let's check that out next with a specification called dynamic range. The dynamic range is the ratio of the maximum output level and the noise floor. Generally speaking, you want this to be as high as possible, as this means a lower noise floor in comparison to the audio signal. The P67 Pro 3 is definitely the worst of the three in this comparison. Again, I measured the rear and front separately, and you can see that there are actually quite some differences, even on the same motherboard. On the P67 Pro 3, the front connection shows a 6 dB better dynamic range. On the Z370 Tai Chi, it's the other way around, and here the rear connection of the motherboard performs quite a bit better. On the MSI board, the front and the rear connection makes no difference in dynamic range. Here is how the motherboards compare to audio interfaces. While this is certainly not a high-end performance, you can see that the built-in audio can absolutely compete with lower-end interfaces in terms of dynamic range. The Z370 Tai Chi even outperforms the Steinberg UR22C in terms of dynamic range with its rear output. The old P67 Pro 3 falls a bit short in this comparison and is more on the same level as an inexpensive Behringer UM2 or M-Audio M-Track Solo. The Pro Z690A lies somewhere in between a Blackline Audio Revolution 2X2 and a Rode AI1. Besides noise, distortion should also be kept to a minimum. I measured the total harmonic distortion plus noise and here are the results. These numbers can't directly be compared to my other audio interface measurements as they are done at a different reference level. The motherboard simply did not reach my standard measurement level, that was the point I mentioned before with the maximum output level. 
But in itself, these THD plus N numbers are not too bad. Even the P67 Pro 3 comes in at about minus 80 dB, and this means that the sum of all distortion and noise is still at least 80 decibels below the test signal. There's hardly any chance that you would ever hear that in practice. So again, while these performances are not perfect, they are already quite good. All in all, the 3.5mm connections on the motherboards work decently well as line level outputs. Now, they are unbalanced though, which makes them susceptible to ground loops. Here an interface with a balanced output can have an advantage, provided that you also use monitors with balanced inputs. Besides that, the built-in audio is quite acceptable. Actually better than I expected and very much sufficient for many cases. Okay, let's see how this all changes when you listen with headphones. In contrast to line level devices, headphones pose a load to the output and that makes them much more difficult to drive, which has an impact on the performance of the output. So here is where I would expect to see a bigger difference between the built-in audio and the audio interfaces. Now here is my huge comparison table for headphone amp performance, which will allow you to quickly compare specs between different devices. The color coding gives you a rough indication of how well the device performs in a particular measurement. I know, with all these color patches it looks a bit like abstract art, but if you squint your eyes a bit, you can immediately see that there's a trend going on, with a bit more yellow and red scattered across the built-in audio specs compared to the interfaces. Let me explain what that means in practice. As before, let's start with the frequency response again. For the front output we can see that the Tai Chi keeps a very flat response, even under the load of the headphones. The P67 Pro 3 and the Pro Z690A show a small amount of roll-off in the bass area. You can hardly distinguish the lines as their performance is very similar. Their response is down by about 2 decibels at 20Hz, and while this isn't as good as the Tai Chi's performance, I doubt that you will notice that. Maybe in an A-B comparison against a flat frequency response, but under normal circumstances this is inaudible. All motherboards have a flat frequency response in the high frequency area, so all in all a very respectable response. Pretty much the same goes for the rear output. Here the P670 Pro 3 improves slightly, but the Tai Chi and the Pro Z690A stay the same. And just for good measure, here I'm showing a few more responses from some audio interfaces in no particular order. You can see that they can sometimes be in a similar ballpark as the built-in audio of the motherboards in terms of frequency response. One thing that is very obvious from my measurements is that the built-in audio of the motherboards has a high output impedance. I've made a whole video about why this is a problem, but in short this should be as low as possible, as this can have a negative impact on the frequency response of the headphones, especially low impedance dynamic ones, which are the most popular type of headphones. On some outputs I could measure up to 200 ohms, and this has the effect that it will create a bass boost on many over-ear headphones, and it can also distort the frequency response of in-ear monitors. Depending on the headphones you use and the output impedance of your motherboard, this might not be a huge deal, or it can be very noticeable. So it's impossible to predict how big of an issue this is going to be, as this varies wildly for each audio setup. But that's why the output impedance should be as low as possible, because then you can use any headphones, and you can be certain that the headphones sound like they were designed to. Audio interfaces are not always perfect either in this regard. Some still have a higher output impedance than I would like to see, but on average they deliver a much lower impedance and thus more accurate response. Another spec where you can see a bigger difference between audio interfaces and the built-in audio is power. How much power an output can produce depends on the impedance of the connected headphones, and that's why one measurement is not enough. As you can see, I measured the power with a couple of common impedances, ranging from 16 ohm, which is typically in the range of in ear monitors, to 600 ohm, which can be found on some over ear headphones. Your typical headphones will be between 32 and 150 ohms, so at least one of the measurements here should be relevant for your particular headphones. As you can see, even with low impedance headphones, which audio devices tend to be able to provide more power to, the motherboards already struggle a bit. Now you will still be able to listen to moderate levels of music, especially if you listen to more compressed modern music, but it won't get really loud. Specifically, the rear output of the P67 Pro 3 falls below 1 mW with some headphones. The best power output of the motherboards goes to the Tai Chi, which even reaches 10 mW with some impedances. That's very acceptable, I usually like to see around 20 mW. Again, not all interfaces are significantly better than the built-in audio in terms of power, 
but on average they deliver a notable power increase. Some interfaces even offer over 100 milliwatts, which will drive pretty much any headphones on the market. If you want to go absolutely crazy, I'm now flipping through the total harmonic distortion plus noise versus power graphs. But for the sake of your and my sanity, I'm not going to go any deeper into this. I just want to mention that the measurements generally show that the P67 Pro 3 is the worst performer in this aspect, especially on the rear output with low impedance headphones. The MSI Pro Z690A performs okay on both the front and the rear, and the z 370 g actually performs really well here. We can also see this in the simplified numbers. The z 370 g even outperforms a few interfaces, and at this point distortion is inaudible. The Pro z 690 a and the P67 Pro 3 definitely have considerably more distortion than what you would typically find on an audio interface. But let's be realistic, headphones themselves can easily have way more distortion than that, and I would argue that the distortion of the built-in audio is low enough to not be perceptible in practice. Still, both motherboards don't win any prizes here. I think it goes without saying that you don't want to hear any noise from the output in your headphones. The sensitivity of the headphones you use will also have a big impact on whether you will hear the noise of an amp or not, but generally speaking, the rear connection of the Z370 Tai Chi and both connections on the Pro Z690A deliver a good performance, and it is unlikely that you will hear any noise from these outputs. The Z370 Tai Chi's and P67 Pro 3's front connection deliver an okay performance. With over-ear headphones you might be fine, but with IEMs there's a good chance that you will start to perceive noise. And this is even more true for the P67 Pro 3's rear output. Once again, you can see that on average the audio interfaces can deliver a better noise performance, which in practice lowers the risk that you might perceive noise from the headphone output. This can be especially important when using IEMs, as these are even more sensitive to noise than over-ear headphones. One measurement where the built-in audio flexes its muscles is the channel balance. With an analog volume control, there is a chance that the left and right channel might not always be equally loud, especially when the volume is set to a low level. That's why you can see some variation here for the audio interfaces, as many use an analog volume dial. As the volume control on the motherboards is purely digital, the channel balance stays perfect even to low listening levels. That's great and one of the reasons why I'm a fan of digitally controlled volume. Crosstalk measures how much audio from one channel leaks into the other, and if you have too much crosstalk, this degrades the stereo image. One thing to note is that the measurements of the front connection include the connection of the motherboard to the front panel connector of the PC case. Each case manufacturer uses different cable gauges and different quality 3.5mm connectors, which affects crosstalk. We can make out a trend here that the direct connection on the motherboard generally results in a lower crosstalk compared to the front connections. The rear connection all look very good in terms of crosstalk performance and are on a similar level as external audio devices. The front connectors on the other hand perform quite a bit worse in this regard. I still don't expect that this makes an obvious difference to sound, but I would have liked to see a better performance here, as this is just on the verge of becoming audible. One thing we can also learn from my tests is that there is sadly no clear statement possible whether you should always connect your headphones to the front or the rear on your PC. On the P67 Pro 3 you would be better off connecting your headphones to the front, on the Z370 Tai Chi the rear would give you the better performance, and on the Pro Z690A it doesn't make any difference. I think it's worth trying both inputs, as there can be a significant performance difference between the two, but it does not always have to be that way. Still, if you can, I suggest to try the front and the rear connector and see which one works better for you. Now, what's the takeaway from this whole video? The quality of the built-in audio in the PC is surprisingly decent. Even my 11-year-old PC has a very acceptable audio performance, and newer boards are getting better and better. The audio quality of course does change depending on the motherboard you choose, but in my tests all motherboards were absolutely fine for casual listening. For competitive listening though, <laughs> okay I'm joking, the point I want to make is that the built-in audio in today's motherboards is already quite good. There are some points though where you are most likely to notice a difference to better audio devices. Number one, bass performance. Especially if you use lower impedance headphones with dynamic drivers, there is a very good chance that the high output impedance of a mainboard results in a slightly bloated bass. Fun fact, some people actually like this and they are a bit disappointed when they first hear their headphones connected to a good audio source. But that does not change the fact 
that a low impedance output can deliver a more accurate response. Number two, noise. In my measurements, the built-in audio wasn't always the cleanest and especially with in-ear monitors, you might start to hear noise. With over-ear headphones, this is much less of a concern and in my tests with the three PCs, I didn't hear noise. But there is one thing that is not captured by my measurements and that's interference generated inside the PC. In one of the test PCs when the graphics card was under heavy load, I could hear a whining noise in the headphones and this interference even changed the pitch depending on the load of the card. With an external audio solution, there is a much higher chance that you won't encounter problems like these. Number three, power. The built-in audio of motherboards often falls quite a bit short in terms of power. Sensitive headphones with low impedances around 32 ohm are usually fine, but especially with headphones with lower sensitivity and higher impedance, you will often find that the built-in audio does not get loud enough. Dedicated audio devices usually deliver more power and are able to drive more demanding headphones to loud listening levels. By the way, I do not recommend an analog headphone amp connected directly to the PC. Yes, you solve the high output impedance as the amp acts as a buffer and you will have much more power to drive your headphones, but the noise and distortion of your built-in audio will still be the same, just amplified by the headphone amp. That's why I suggest an audio interface or DAC with a headphone output, which connects via USB as this has the potential to improve your audio quality much more. Lastly, I want to mention that besides audio quality, there are many more reasons why you might want to use an external DAC or audio interface. For example, shorter latencies for monitoring with ASIO, more options in terms of in and outputs, balanced connections, and many people also like the physical controls of an external audio device. But as I said, I wanted to purely focus on the audio quality in this video. In the end, the difference in audio quality between the built-in audio in your PC and an external device can be smaller or bigger depending on which devices you are comparing. But more often than not, it is not this crazy night and day difference that some people claim. If you want to get the highest audio accuracy, more power to drive your headphones to louder levels and less noise, then I think an upgrade to a dedicated audio solution makes sense. If you don't feel any of these things are currently an issue for you, then the built-in audio quality of your PC is absolutely fine. If you like this little deep dive into PC audio quality, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you all in the next one.